he is worthy. So I want to, again, try to give a personal approach to this. You know, whether or not you and I and anyone on this planet responds to Christ's worthiness, he's still worthy. Amen. 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 But we're, when you and I get to get under the spout where the glory comes out is when we recognize that worthiness by receiving the finished work of Jesus Christ on the cross for our sins. And then we realize, I couldn't have done it. No one else born of man and woman could have done it. Jesus was the only one worthy to open the scroll. Hallelujah. So this was illustrated to me last night. Little Ava came to spend a little time with us, as she does on occasion. And she was just a little bit of a mood. She had had a long day. We're used to that. It's all good. We just treat it with love and patience. So as things kind of went on and she warmed up and the such, Mimi came in to the room where she was at. and Ava said, Mimi, I love you. And so I, I knew that we were, we were making some ground. Selfishly, I walked into the room and I said, you told Mimi that you love her. Do you love me? She went, nope. <laughs> I wasn't worthy. <laughs> and that's okay. Watch this. Because we're, we're using this little example, playful, harmless example. The reality is that every one of you knows what it is to be rejected by this world. Or someone or something of this world. You know what that is. In church, for me, on a very selfish level, if you will, but I think this is okay with Christ. He wants you to take all of the solace and refuge that you can muster that the only one that was worthy to take your sin to the cross loves you unequivocally. Unequivocally. That means without no exception. Unconditional, agape love. And you will never. You can always run in. The Hebrews says to the throne of grace, and you can get grace in the time of need. When you walk into the throne room, he'll always say, "Yes, I love you. I love you." Hallelujah! Praise the Lamb. Let's go to the Lord in prayer. Father, I thank you for that love. I thank you for this praise team and how they have brought us into this throne room to see these truths. Father, I pray and I beg that you will help us to experience transformation as we meet with you Monday through Saturday, that when we meet those and know those and spend time with those within our sphere of influence, they will know that we've spent time with you. For our cancer sick, Amy Banderman, Millie Barnes, Sandy Ballou, Sue Brand, Linda Dickinson, Karen Fleer, Dan Goodman, Susan Paxson, Lynn Prince, Kevin Pulse, Robert Rapold, we ask that you would heal them completely, totally, and wholly of cancer. For the Martins, the Lowers, the Nances, the Henthorns, the Domkeys, the Murphys, the Harilkas, the Ramses, Benjamin, Tony Kingston, Rachel Hanley Flyter, Brandon Weiss, Lucas Eves, Kenneth Brown. Father, we beg for your spiritual breath of fresh air. Help them to be the lighthouse of the gospel. And Father, we want to praise you for the time that we had them here. And we want to thank you for their gifts and talents that they used while they were here to serve you and using those gifts and talents now where they're at to serve you. And Father, uh, we just ask you now to bless the offering today, to use it to meet the needs of this church to the furtherance of the gospel, through the riches and glory in Christ Jesus. In Jesus' precious and holy name we ask it. Amen. You may be seated. Kids time. Kids time. Come on, on back. The third installment. Hebrews chapter 4. Boy, you can tell the kids are pumped for church camp. They're excited. The workers are nervous.
Hebrews chapter 4. I'm going to have to check that and make sure I'm telling you right. This is our third installment of the message, uh, Emotional Intelligence, part 3. Let me... Ah, Hebrews chapter 5. Hebrews chapter 5, verse 14. Let's stand for the reading and reverence of God's holy word. If you're new to us this week, meaning you haven't been able to be with us the last two weeks, then we just need to catch up, and we will through a little bit of review here in a moment. But I uh, had a conversation about uh, four Wednesdays ago with uh, Chief Eric Lewis and Sullivan, uh, Fire Chief, and he uttered these words, emotional intelligence. I had never heard those two words put together before. That launched me into a study because essentially it's a study on maturity. Uh, that is an area that, that I struggle with uh, on a daily basis if I'm not careful. As a minister, it's an area that I see a great need, not just within this church, but throughout the kingdom of God. We have such a need for emotional intelligence on a day-in, day-out basis and so as I have uh, basically launched into this study, it's turned into uh, so far and, and hoping for today to be the last installment, at least for this go-round uh, of uh, messages. So we look here at Ephesians, I'm sorry, Hebrews chapter 5 verse 14, Hebrews chapter 5 verse 14, but solid food belongs to those who are of full age, that is, those who by reason of use have their senses exercised to discern both good and evil. I want to read to you ESV's version. But solid food is for the mature, for those who have their powers of discernment trained by constant practice to distinguish good from evil. Father, we ask you to add your blessings to the reading and preaching of your holy word. In Jesus' precious and holy name we ask it. Amen. You may be seated. Now, I think it's important for you to know and understand that God's Word is never intentionally trying to put you down. God's Word is never intentionally trying to, if you will, cut you down. And so it's there for instruction. It's there to help you. Sometimes it's a bitter pill to swallow. It's going to be in your best interest if you'll just go ahead and swallow it and learn from it. And so this passage is certainly one of those that strikes at the heart. If you're not, quote unquote, where you need to be on an emotional intelligence level or a maturity level, this verse is a hard-hitting verse. Solid food. He's talking, of course, about the Scripture. But I think it's something important to realize. You're going to get solid food whether you like it or not. You're going to get the solid food of a financial reversal sooner or later in your life. You're going to get the solid food of a health reversal, like it or not. You're going to get the solid food of losing a loved one. Fill in the blank. You're going to eat some solid food whether you're ready for it or not. So you might as well, we might as well get ready for it. And the only way you can get ready for the solid food of this world is to eat the solid food of God's Word. And when you and I grow in our emotional intelligence in Scripture, I'm not saying it's going to be easy, but it is going to be doable. I love the verse that says, I'll never leave you nor forsake you. And so he's going to walk those roads with us. I don't know how much you're into the NBA finals, but I heard a good word yesterday from the coach to the Suns. They lost last night, but nonetheless, it's a good word. What we're looking for, gentlemen, is on the other side of hard. And I thought, man, that's good. That's good motivation, and it's true. They are at the highest level of their game. They're playing another team that it's the highest level of their game, and that other team wants to win as bad, if not more, than they do. So if we're going to win this seven-game series by winning four games, we've got to realize it's on the other side of hard. Church, listen to me. There is no institution that has a harder commission than you and I. 
We're trying to convince men, women, boys and girls that are convinced by this world, by the devil and their flesh, that we have lost our ever-loving mind. And we're trying to show them that Jesus Christ loves them. And even though, yes, he has to get you to the point that you admit you're a sinner, he's paid for it. He's taken care of it. That's on the other side of heart. It's on the other side of heart. And so if you and I are going to make it, if we're going to do what God has called us to do, we've got to be determined. We've got to be determined. And that is the end, if you will, of emotional intelligence. We have spent two messages getting to this message, and I just want to give you a little bit of review for those uh, that maybe you... Uh, or like me, and you can't remember the last two weeks, but maybe you weren't able to be here either um, and got to get to the right sermon. Give me just a second. Beautiful. So what is emotional intelligence? This is a sermon in a sentence. We've said this for the last two weeks. Being able to navigate and mitigate. And church, I'm going to tell you, that's probably the next series coming to you on those two words. Everything that you face in the next week, you're going to need to mitigate it and navigate it. True story. It's good stuff. So being able, emotional intelligence is being able to navigate and mitigate difficult situations and circumstances with calmness and maturity and effectiveness. Now, we've settled it, or I don't know if that's the right way to put it. We have definitely established that Brother Ben, for several years now, has been going through an emotional intelligence experiment with our local DMV departments in Franklin County. Yeah, thank you for laughing. It's, it's meant for humor. If you work in the DMV, I have nothing but love and respect, and you are on my prayer list. And you'll understand better when I get done with this illustration. I used to be that person that on the fourth trip that you tell me I haven't got something, I, I'd struggle. I would show my emotional unintelligence as much as I felt like a preacher could and still keep his job type thing until I wandered quite by happenstance <laughs> on my part, but not on God's part. I'm convinced of that. I wandered into a DMV in southern Missouri. I was looking for directions. And there was that placard. Your lack of preparation does not constitute an emergency on my part changed my life when it came to the DMV. And so Friday, I had to go to the DMV. I had actually already went a couple days earlier and discovered what all I didn't have. And so on my first visit to the DMV on Friday, I thought stupidly, I thought surely, with rain in the forecast, and it's raining right now, no one else in Franklin County is dumb enough to stand in the rain. I want you to know there's several people as dumb as me, and they were there. And so, now, it didn't rain, praise the Lord, but because only seven can be in the office, and then you got to line that area. If you, if you go to Union DMV, you know exactly what I'm talking about. So... When I get in there, there's this guy. And guys, I'm telling you, this guy had, I'm 56. He was easily 60. And he was jacked. I mean, this guy had guns like that. And he had the shape. I mean, this dude looked like he just walked out of the fitness center. It, it was something at this age. And I, I was nothing but respect, but bless his heart, he was having a bad day. And every time they told him that you didn't have something right, he, it, the temperature, I mean, just went up and up. He got on the phone calling his wife, telling her to do this, that, and the other, take a picture and all this. And, and wow, I just almost offered him my card and said, I do counseling. But I just, I feared for my life type thing. And it, you, could, you could sense it. I mean, everybody was feeling it. It got so serious at one point that I looked at the waistband to just try to see 
was this guy carried. It, it was scaring me, if you will. Now, I'm not telling you I was fearing for my life in that I'm just going to run. I'm telling you, I was trying to figure out, okay, you know, if I got everything in order, because okay, this guy's going to take me out. I mean, but I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to die trying, you know, type deal. That's just, that's who I am. Praise the Lord, we got through it. We got through it. On my second visit at the DMV, <laughs> I was determined to try to help them because I could tell they were stressed. And, and God just keeps letting me in. I, can you imagine putting up with that day in, day out, all day? I, I can't imagine. And so the patience that I have for DMV folks has grown exponentially. I refuse to be that guy that's going to make them have a bad day. I refuse. Thank you, Brother Kirk. We got one, two people at Bethel Church. Gonna, I, I'm messing with you. On my third visit, true story. On my third, I was determined to bring some light. We're going to have fun. And we did. And by the time I left, they didn't know my name. They didn't know I was a preacher at Bethel. None of that because that time will come if the Holy Spirit leads. They had smiles on their face when I left. And, and that's important, church. Now, 20 years ago, me and that guy would have been tearing the place apart. Until me. Yeah. And, and, and so I'm just telling you, I know, I know that God can change us. I know he can. And so because, first of all, I just want to go on. It shouldn't be that hard. <laughs> I just had to get that out. Hey. But it is that hard. Sometimes it is that hard. But do you know what God did for me? God put someone in my path that gave me a piece of information that I didn't know that allowed me to get that done. Because guess where I'm going to be all week this week? I'm going to be at church camp. And probably for the first time in my life, I've got a car registration before the last hour of the last day of the month. Yeah, yeah, yeah let's give the Lord a hand on that. Because that's all God, I guarantee you. Now, so here's intelligence. Ben's version, one's ability to understand or comprehend. Emotional, Ben's version, one's reactions to stimulation, positive or negative. Therefore, emotional intelligence is the maturation process of being able to control one's emotions to not negatively affect others, but also not undervalue anyone either. Yes, this is review. Please listen. Intelligent emotion is the controlling of oneself to the benefits of others and the situation. When it comes to emotion... Emotional intelligence is another way, possibly a more informative way, to describe a person's level of maturity. So, if you would say that that person's emotional intelligence isn't very high, you are indicating that their maturity in the area of emotional control is not very high. And I would say that towards that one gentleman. I wouldn't say it as a slap. I wouldn't say it as a cut. I'm telling you that when he was put in a pressure cooker, he didn't handle it well. Now, we'd have to sit down with him over a cup of coffee and figure out, was he already having a bad day? Is this how he operates 24-7? We, we don't know. And again, I don't know this guy's name. I wouldn't say it if I did. But I saw with my two eyes a, a poster child, if you will, of emotional unintelligence. What are the enemies to emotional intelligence? The flesh, the devil, the world system. What are the results of emotional unintelligence? And this was all last week. Uncontrolled anger, uncontrolled response. What, what if, and I didn't think of this till this morning, because, I mean, we're talking about three to four precious ladies behind this counter. And please understand me, ladies, I know you are fully capable to take care of yourself, but the reality is that when you've got a daunting physical specimen in front of you, it can be a struggle. Watch this. But what if one of those girls... She's just had enough, and she stands up and says, that's it. <laughs> I'm not taking it no more. And, I mean, it's just on. <laughs> yeah. Wow. But that's what I'm trying to say. Look here. Uncontrolled response. As aggressive as that guy was being, as intimidating as he was being, I guarantee you if that little 90, she was 90 pounds soaking wet, if she would have stood up there and said, that's it, 
his eyes would have got this big and he'd just, I, I hope, he would have cared. I'm sorry, I'm sorry. Because he really, even though he was struggling, he was trying to, you could tell, he, he was battling. He was battling to keep himself where he ought to be. Number three, harder work environment. What about those other three ladies? If this, should they know, she fitting to go off. <laughs> Come on, man, calm down. She fitting to go. You know, there it is. Harder work environment. Inefficiency. <laughs> In a DMV, it's not conducive to work when papers fly everywhere. It's just not. Our computer systems go down. Inefficiency, earned reputation, strained relationships, avoidance that leads to loneliness. So what's the process? We got through two points of the process last week. Outcome is worth the input. You ready? Let's say it, church. Outcome is worth the input. People are the product. We are approaching $6,000 that the association has spent to replace everything that was stolen. Outcome is worth the input. If we plant one seed of the gospel this week that results in a child coming to Christ before they enter into eternity, it's been worth it all. It's been worth it all. And I guarantee you, when that child gets on the other side, they will say with clear perspective, it had been worth $6 billion to me to know, to know that I've got a climate-controlled eternity. Outcome is worth the input. Number two, expect difficulty. Church, we've got to go into our day today and tomorrow knowing that it's going to be difficult. It's going to be difficult. Remember what we talked about already? That what we're called to do is on the other side of hard. Is on the other side of hard. So we've got to expect difficulty. The three enemies we mentioned earlier are not doing their job if we do not have difficulty in our daily tasks. We are revealing our immaturity and emotional unintelligence if we are not prepared for the difficulties that come on a daily basis. Number three, and here you go. Meet difficulty. With determination. Now, if we're going to be true and stay with our approach here to define these words, 1828 Webster says, the act of determining or deciding. Decision of a question in the mind. Firm resolution. Settled purpose as they have acquainted me with their determination. Absolute direction to a certain end. Remissness can by no means consist with a constant determination of the will to the greatest apparent good an ending, a putting an end to as the determination of a will. And so, church, let's, let's keep it real here. We are lovingly challenging every one of us, including myself, to be determined, to be emotionally intelligent, to display the character of Christ. What does the word determined mean? Ended, concluded, decided, limited, fixed, settled, resolved, directed. Having a firm or fixed purpose as a determined man or manifesting a firm resolution as a determined countenance. So, point number one. The purpose of determination. Simple. What is the purpose of determining to meet difficulty with determination. Here it is. You ready? To get the task done. To complete it. That's the purpose. The purpose of determination is to get her done. You and I need to absolutely be determined that we are going to be mature in Christ. We are going to portray Christ when we are offered an opportunity to portray a devilish attitude, a devilish action, a sinful attitude, a worldly attitude. We've got to show our determination that we're not going to do that. We are absolutely going to portray Christ. So, I love this. The completion of the task. That's the purpose. So please hear this. What is the task? The task is emotional intelligence, living your life in a mature Christ-like manner so that you can truly do what the Scripture says to do, which is whatever you do, whether you eat or drink, do all to the glory of God. But watch this. We need to point something out. We got a disclaimer. Like a lot of things in our life and in this world, this is a 24-hour segmented task. 
All you can do is today. So if we're going to be determined, if we're going to meet difficulty with the determination, we have to limit our scope to the difficulties of today. That is scriptural and mature. Do not allow the pressure or the deceit of the devil to trick you into worrying about things that you cannot control. Church, listen to me. Tomorrow will take care of itself, the Bible says. Sufficient for today is the trouble therewith. In other words, today is telling you, pal, you need to quit worrying about tomorrow because i got enough stuff to mess with you today. See, tomorrow may never come. Today is what you have. That's why they call it the present. And so we have to quit worrying about everything else, and we've got to be determined that we're going to be emotionally intelligent and concerning the things that are in front of us right here, right now. My dad probably gave me one of the best phrases, and I can't tell you how many times I've used it. Son, you're borrowing trouble. Well, you're worrying about tomorrow. You're worrying about something you have no control over, babe. Quit borrowing trouble. Good stuff. Good stuff. And I give it to you today. The purpose of determination is to complete the task. Point number two. What is the posture of determination. Well, simply put, it's prayer and humility. If you and I are going to achieve emotional intelligence and biblical maturity, we're going to do it on our knees. We're going to do it through humility. Now, I used uh, Brad as an example this morning because I love it when he jokes about how ripped he is, you know, and how strong he is. Clay, I'm sure you've seen him do this. He'll, he'll put his arms out, and he'll try to go through a door frame. Of course, he hits, you know, his arms hit because his muscles are so big, so he turns like this and goes through. Yeah. <laughs> as long as, and it's all a joke on Brad's part. It's all a joke. As long as you and I have this blown-up image of ourselves, I can handle it. Bring it on. You're not going to make it. When you and I get on our knees and we start praying stuff like, Lord, if you don't get involved in this, this isn't going to turn out good. Lord, if you don't get inside of me and and do this for me, I'm not going to be able to do it. My flesh is too weak. God will get in. God will stand up inside of you. God will do what he has asked you to do through you. I don't know when it was, but sometime in college, within 10 years after college, I came to connection. I always thought that God gave me a to-do list and it was up to me to get it done, and if I didn't get it done, I failed him miserably. Nope. God gives a to-do list to the spirit within him. And as I die to self and allow the spirit to do it through me, it gets done to the glory of God. And God will never ask you to do something that he will not empower you to do it. But you and I have to be determined to let him do it inside of us. The posture of determination. you got to be humble. you got to beg God. Number three, the process of determination. Now, this is simply put, this is you and I uh, spending time with God. This is you and I living out our faith by having our quiet time seeking the Lord, so on and so forth. But I've got three E's to go with this. Are you ready? The first E is exposure. You and I need to expose ourselves to God's word on a daily basis. We need to expose ourselves to the preaching and teaching of God's word on a weekly basis. You're doing that right now. But you know, through the week, you've got 99.1, you've got 90. Uh, 1.5, and you can expose yourself to the wonderful preaching and teaching of God's Word. We must look at, the Bible calls this book a mirror, and it will show you what you look like, and then it will love you enough to say, this is where you need to change. The process of determination is exposure to God's Word. Be, under this point, elimination. you got to confess sin. You've got to absolutely deal with sin. Watch this. Learn new habits. When I saw that DMV sign at Southern Missouri, I learned me a new habit. I learned the habit of not blaming someone else for my lack of preparation. 
I needed that. Learn new habits to replace old ones. What about this? Coping skills. I shared this with first service. Most of them were awake. You see, about 12 years when I realized ago that I was destroying my family with my anger, this is one of the coping skills that I learned. Daryl just did it. <sighs> yeah. Now, early on, when my kids would hear me go, <sighs> this is what they'd do. <laughs> Give dad some space. That's smart, wise kids. It also gave me some time to think. <sighs> Come on, Ben, don't do this. Dude, don't do this. Relax. You're, you're making this more than what it is. One of my kids, very little, would say, Dad, don't get serious. <laughs> don't, don't get serious, because he knew what serious was. And, and, and amen to that. You've got to learn coping skills. You, you've got to train yourself, and the Holy Spirit will absolutely help you with this as you expose yourself to God's Word. How about this one? Imitation. So you, and I said three E's, okay? That last one is spelled with an I. But uh, <laughs> phonics, okay? Phonics. Here we go. <laughs> Exposure, elimination, and imitation. Replace sinful attitudes and actions with Christ attitudes and actions. Brother Brad, whenever you get a chance, if you can put that picture up there that we did in, in first service. Look at that. Never give up. Never give up. Now, just so you all understand, this is you. You, you defraud. This is the devil, the world, your flesh, whatever the case may be. This is what you got to do, all right? You got to convince that Henri Stork or whatever it is that it don't want to eat you or it's going to die. <laughs> You're going to die trying. And sooner or later, praise the Lord, it'll spit you out. It will. And, and guys, listen, isn't it so true? Again, we've been using Brad, and I hope and pray that everything I've said about Brad, you've taken as a positive, because that's how I mean it. Brad humbly told me years and years ago, Brother Ben, just about every issue or struggle that I have in my marriage or in my parenting or whatever, it's me. It's me. And, and, and even though as men we all know that, it's difficult to claim it. It's difficult to own it. Now, ladies, you know your struggles, and you need to own and claim your struggles, but watch this. When everybody does that, boy, life gets a lot simpler. When everybody owns their issue and works, stays in their yard, as we like to say. So it's so important that in this area of the process of determination that we expose ourselves to God's Word, that we eliminate sin, that we imitate Christ, replace sinful attitudes and actions with Christ's attitudes and actions. So uh, I think it's lastly here. The po No, it's not. I think this is point number three. Let's try that. Point number three, the poster child of determination. Who, who do you suppose is the poster child? Of determination, Jesus Christ. Here we go, Hebrews chapter 12. Therefore, since we are surrounded by such a great cloud of witnesses, let us throw off everything that hinders and the sin that so easily entangles, and let us run with perseverance the race marked out for us, fixing our eyes on Jesus, the pioneer and perfecter of our faith. For the joy set before him, he endured the cross, scorning its shame, and sat down at the right hand of the throne of God. Consider him who endured such opposition from sinners so that you will not grow weary and lose heart. Church, not a one of us have endured the other side of hard like Jesus has. But he did it. And he lives inside of you and I, and so you and I can absolutely reach emotional intelligence. What about this? Philippians chapter 2. Then make my joy complete, Paul says, by being like-minded, having the same love, being one in spirit and of one mind. Do nothing out of selfish ambition or vain conceit. Rather, in humility, value others before yourselves, not looking to your own interests, but each of you to the interest of the others. In your relationships with one another, have the same mindset as Jesus Christ, 
who being in very nature God, did not consider equality with God something to be used to his own advantage. Rather, he made himself nothing by taking the very nature of a servant, being made in human likeness and being found in appearance as a man. He humbled himself by becoming obedient to death, even death on the cross. Therefore, God exalted him to the highest place and gave him the name that is above every name, that at the name of Jesus every knee should bow in heaven and on earth and under the earth and every tongue acknowledge that Jesus Christ is Lord to the glory of God the Father. You know, let's just keep reading that. Therefore, my dear friends, as you have always obeyed, not only in my presence, but now much more in my absence, continue to work out your salvation with fear and trembling. For it is God who works in you to will and to act in order to fulfill his good purpose. That is the scripture saying the very thing that I said just a while ago. And I can't say it as good as scripture can say it. God will never ask of you to do something that he will not empower you to do it. For it is God who works in you to will and to act in order to fulfill his good purpose, do everything without grumbling and murmuring. If it were my camp before any sponsor got to go into camp, they would have to raise their right hand, left hand on the Bible and say, I will do all things this week without grumbling or murmuring. Thank you. It's a joke. We're not going to do that. But church, every big event that we do, it seems like God always has something like this in the works to give me an opportunity to encourage you. And church, listen, sometimes I'm the biggest offender. And so I have to remind myself, no, 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 come on now. Ben, emotional intelligence. Do all things without murmuring or complaining. Point number four and last point of this message, the people of determination. Now to him who is able to do immeasurably more than all we ask or imagine according to his power that is at work within us, to him be glory in the church and in Christ Jesus' church. We are the people of determination. This world ought to be able to look to us for motivation. Man, if we could just be like those folks in the church. Look at what they do. They've got the hardest job on the planet to convince sinners to kneel to Christ. And they do it with determination. And I want you to know that you can say that about the church of Jesus Christ. Most folks won't say it because they're not going to give us any credit. And that's okay. But we ought to have such a reputation that we are so committed because, watch this, there is nothing else better than helping men, women, boys, and girls to live forever in a climate-controlled eternity. Let's all stand. Musicians, will you come? If you're here today and you have never, ever accepted Jesus Christ as your Savior, this is an invitation. And I shared this in first service. I think it would be good to remind us in second service as well, why do we do this? Why do we do what we're fixing to do? Why do we do an invitation? Because we believe that every time the Word of God is preached, every time a gospel presentation is given, especially in a quote-unquote formal worship church setting, an invitation should be given. I believe that. We as a church Believe that. What other churches do, that's on them and between them and God. And it, that's between them. But here at Bethel Baptist Church, we're going to give you an opportunity to respond. Now, you, this probably isn't the first service you've been to here. We don't sing forever. And you might think, boy, if I go to that altar, i got so much to pray over. I'm going to be there for... This altar is 24-7. However long you need to stay here, you stay here. It's... Pretty similar to children are no interruption. Worshippers at the altar are no interruption. You're not going to keep me from moving forward. You're not going to keep us from dismissing. You stay there as long as you need to type thing. Because first service, you know, we, we have a deadline. Well, not, not at the altar. And so if you need to pray it through, you pray it through. 
If you want someone to pray through with you, you let me know type thing. If you're here today and you've never accepted Christ, please come. Maybe you just want to turn this into an old-fashioned altar. Maybe if you're like me, you just really need emotional intelligence. Let's come and seek it from the Lord. Let's sing.